Hey, this is Joe. In this video, we're going to discuss bonding issues between titanium and carbon fiber materials. I picked up a new microphone and pop filter, so let me know if this sounds okay. I've included a link for a video from OceanGate YouTube channel showing how OceanGate bonded the titanium flange to the carbon fiber cylinder. Uh, here we see a, a still image of the flange uh, just before bonding. If you look at the bottom of this titanium uh, flange or ring here, you'll see at the very bottom where they've applied uh, their epoxy adhesive. Then if you look at the top edge here of the uh, carbon fiber cylinder, you see about oh a two to three inch band of uh, coated in epoxy. So what they did is then they slid the ring down on top of the uh, carbon fiber cylinder and then bonded that uh, flange to the carbon fiber. Let's take a look at an image that was taken from the recovery videos that were shown uh, in the media. Take a look at the flange here. This is the same flange that we saw in the, the previous screenshot, except this is the flange from the Titan and not the, uh, the uh, previous sub. The flange was recovered as a separate item from the ocean floor. If you look at the bonding edge, which is right here, you notice that there are no traces of carbon fiber whatsoever. It appears that uh, when the carbon section imploded, the forces push the end caps right off of the carbon fiber ends of the cylinder. Uh, normally you would you might see fragments of carbon fiber that were that was left on the flange, but it looks very clean, almost like it was just pushed right off. This to me looks like a, a case of poor bonding and we'll get into some more issues and why I think this is the case. This is an article I found on Science Direct. It's titled, Surface Treatment of Titanium for Adhesive Bonding to Polymer Composites, a Review. In the first sentence, it says, At present, the bonding of polymer composites to titanium is a problem which has not been fully solved. Now, this is a bit of a dated document. It's dated back in 2001. Uh, I have some more uh, current information, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, the article goes on to say that in order to produce a strong and durable adhesive joint between different substrates, surface treatment is necessary. And we'll talk about that in a second. So certain bonding techniques provide adequate static strength, but have little durability when exposed to hot, moist environments. It says a well-chosen polymeric adhesive to polymer interface is unlikely to fail because, in, because of the environmental induced stress due to the nature of the bond formed. It says, on the other hand, the durability of a polymeric adhesive to a metal joint is not as stable. Early studies in the 60s revealed that these joints did not perform well in hot, wet conditions with frequent occurrence of short-term interfacial bond failure. Uh, the treatment that they're talking about is some form of a, a surface abrasion, either uh, like a grinding, a, a laser ablation, uh, acid washing, things like that. Uh, we'll take a look at a more modern process uh, which could address these issues with titanium and carbon fiber. Uh, but I doubt that uh, OceanGate knew about this process. Uh, they are a bit proprietary. Let's now discuss uh, adhesion. This is a really interesting subject. This is a Wikipedia entry on adhesion. It says, adhesion is a tendency of dissimilar particles or surfaces to cling to one another. Cohesion refers to the tendency of similar or identical particles, surfaces, to cling to one another. This is the forces that cause adhesion and cohesion can be divided into several types. 
we're going to discuss a few of these types because it applies to uh, uh, to titanium and carbon fiber. And it says, and it, when I was in school, uh, they always referred to bonding uh, carbon fiber to some form of other material like metal alloys as being a mechanical bond. And it says, adhesive materials fill in voids or pores of the surfaces and hold surfaces together by interlocking. So this is basically what a mechanical bond does. And it says, then we go on to something which is referred to as a chemical bond. It says, two materials may form a compound at the joint. The strongest joints are where atoms of the two materials share or swap electrons, known respectively as covalent bonding or ionic bonding. And this is, uh, again, where you get some level of electron exchange between the two surfaces. But carbon fiber is already cured at this point, and titanium is usually at room temperature. So you're not going to get much uh, of a chemical bonding in this type of a process. Uh, there's another type of bond which is called a dispersive bond, and this is rather complex. It deals with the attraction between two molecules, each of which has a region of slight positive or negative charge between the two surfaces. Uh, again, this is rather complex, and uh, it's not really uh, pertinent to talking about bonding already cured carbon fiber with uh, room temperature uh, titanium. But then I've run across a new process called carbotanium, and this is really interesting. Carbotanium is a combination of beta-titanium alloy and carbon composite. It is commonly used in the Pagani cars. Pagani, I hope I'm saying that right. It's, I'm sure you've heard of it. They're supercars. Uh, it's a combination of beta-titanium alloy with advanced carbon composites having a matched yield strength and modulus of elasticity ratio. Remember in the last video we talked that titanium and carbon fiber have different modulus of elasticity. Uh, says when the combination is adhesively bonded, both parts will approach maximum yield strength and fail at a similar amount of total strain. The components of carbotanium, carbon fiber, and titanium are woven together to form a strong, light material that can withstand significant amounts of heat and strain. The titanium and carbon composites are combined by first abrading the titanium to be bonded, coating the titanium with, a plat with platinum. The titanium is then heated in an oven at 500 C for several hours. A primer is then sprayed onto the coated titanium. Next, an adhesive is applied to the primer side of the titanium, and then finally the carbon is applies the carbon is applied to the adhesive. Now, this paragraph does not go into any great detail. Do they cool the titanium before they do the bonding? It says, what state is the carbon fiber in? I mean, is it already cured carbon fiber? Is it uh, carbon fiber before it has been um, uh, injected with uh, resin? Again, the article doesn't really go into much detail because I'm assuming it's rather proprietary to the uh, Pagani cars. It says, Carbotanium is a patented composite material invented by Modena Design, the carbon composite manufacturing and consultancy arm of the Italian car company Pagani. Pagani has applied this weave on select models of their extra strong and lightweight supercars. So again, this is more modern technology. I believe this... Uh, this Wikipedia article is uh, dated right around 2014. What I have here is a uh, pressure to depth and depth to pressure calculator from Blue Robotics. Blue Robotics is a company that makes uh, components for ROVs and complete ROVs. Uh, they're based in California. So we have a calculator here. So let's go ahead and put in a depth of the Titanic, which is right around 
13,000 feet. And then you notice here at the bottom, they're indicating that the uh, PSI of at this depth is 5,619.21 PSI. So let's keep that number uh, in mind. Uh, and what engineer, engineers are designing uh, structures, uh, they usually calculate in a safety factor. And that safety factor is around 150%. So if we take, let's say, 55, 5600 PSI, and we um, multiply that by 150%, we get a right around uh, a little over 9,000 PSI. So again, let's keep that number in mind here. Now let's take a look at some common uh, epoxy adhesives uh, that are used uh, in commercial and or aerospace applications. Here we have uh, a 3M product. This is called 3M Scotch Weld Epoxy Adhesive DP420 Black. Uh, let's scroll down and let's look at some of the properties. There's a whole list of different uh, uh, curing characteristics with different types of material. And if you go through and look at the list, uh, titanium is not mentioned at all. But as a comparison, let's take a look at some characteristics uh, with aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you are. Uh, let's say, let's go down and view the highest characteristic here is 4,700 PSI. Okay, this is uh, curing, uh, it says, 60 minutes at 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. And they're claiming that the uh, strength of this uh, adhesive is 4,700 PSI. Okay, if we go to another one here, okay, this is a 24 uh, hour cure at 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees C with a substrate of aluminum. And again, we're getting a 4,500 PSI rating. But again, nowhere do I see titanium mentioned uh, in these characteristics. Let's now go over and take a look at, uh, this is uh, a Loctite, some Loctite information uh, on uh, aerospace uh, product selector guide. This is some really nice documentation here. So let's go down and what we're going to do is there's different types of structural adhesives. There's film adhesives, uh, which are commonly used uh, when bonding different types of materials that are then autoclaved or uh, cured at a elevated temperature in an oven. Um, we have some core fill, uh, and primers, and but what we're interested in here is uh, paste adhesives. So let's go down to page 26 and take a look at some paste adhesives. Here we're looking at a section. Um, this is composite bonding and repair adhesives. Uh, there's a lot of different products. It goes through several pages. If you look down at the product, here it gives you the name of the product. Uh, let's go back up here and look at some uh, physical properties here. Uh, bulk properties. We have uh, we have some ratings. And interesting, there's a section here called compressive strength. We got 7,500 psi, 7,700 psi. If you go down and look at some of the others here. Uh, along the same thing, we have compressive strengths of 7,700, 98, 78 uh, PSI, 11,300 PSI. So there are some composite bonding adhesives here that meet uh, the 150% uh, safety factor uh, of bonding the uh, titanium to the carbon fiber. But we don't know... Um, from looking at some of the information on the OceanGate website, what type of epoxy adhesive that OceanGate used. But 
it does appear that uh, some of these products uh, uh, would qualify as uh, valid uh, adhesives to use uh, with titanium and uh, carbon fiber. So looking at all of this data, what can we come up with? Um, I did speak uh, to some engineering folks uh, that replied to some comments uh, on the earlier video. And this one engineer was indicating that he has done a lot of uh, pressure vessel testing with carbon fiber. And uh, he did indicate that a lot of the failures he did uh, get in his testing uh, were right around the areas of the end caps and they basically blew the end caps off. Uh, looking at again some of the recovery images uh, where you can see the uh, titanium flange being separated from the carbon fiber with no pieces or remnant of carbon fiber attached to that titanium flange it looks like uh, possibly, again, this is in theory, we haven't seen any test results yet from the, uh, the, the Canadian version of the NTSB, but uh, it does appear that uh, more than likely the carbon fiber cylinder did fail, and either as part of the failure or right after the failure, it uh, blew the uh, titanium hemispherical or the titanium flanges off of the carbon fiber and I find it really interesting that on the pictures of the flanges now again we only saw about a quarter of the flange we didn't see any of it because they had it covered up with canvas but we did did not see any carbon fiber stuck to or fragments stuck to that that uh, bottom flange portion of the titanium uh, section there so we've, we've determined that there is uh, adhesive out there that is, uh, is rated um, and is capable of handling the stresses at 13,000 feet. We also have determined that uh, bonding uh, composite to titanium can be a problem and that it has to, the surface has to be properly prepared and abraded properly for to get a correct bond. Again, we, we've also determined that uh, the end caps can blow off and it appears that that is the case of what happened. Now, we don't know whether the end caps blew off first or that the carbon fiber imploded first. We don't know that, but I'm assuming that uh, more than likely the uh, carbon fiber failed first and as as a result the end caps blew off during the implosion again we won't know that till uh, the canadian version of the NT ntsb finishes their investigation but this is all rather interesting uh, information uh, and i'll post all of the the literature that i've shown here in the video in the description of this video so i'd like to thank everyone and uh, for watching and I hope you enjoyed uh, this video.